welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers stop and identify laws, reasonable suspicion, and the right to film, and is brought to us by A Tie from Up High's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into today's interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Incogni, a new product brought together by our friends at Surfshark. Have you ever Googled something only to have all of your social media feeds filled with nonsense ads based on your search? The digital security experts at Surfshark have developed a new product to help protect your personal data from being sold by large corporations and dark web brokers. Whenever you use a digital service like Facebook or Amazon, there is a high probability that your personal information is collected and sold to data brokers. Thanks to the California Consumer Privacy Act, you have the right to request that your data be deleted and prevented from being sold. However, as with any other legal matter, it can take weeks or even months to actually see any results. Incogni is a web service that does all the hard work for you and submits deletion requests on your behalf to over 66 data brokers worldwide. Incogni makes the process of reclaiming your personal data simple and automated. All you have to do is sign up, enter your info, and Incogni will take care of the rest. Right now, Incogni is offering the first 100 members of the ATA community who click the link below and use code AUDIT a 60% discount on their Incogni service. So click the link in the description and claim your exclusive offer before it's too late. Thanks again to Incogni for sponsoring this episode. In a video posted on June 24th, 2023, Officer Sidoti of the Cleveland Clinic Police Department stopped local resident Keith Golston during a workout in the Cleveland Clinic parking lot in Cleveland, Ohio, after receiving a report that an individual matching his description was looking in vehicles. Officer Sidoti grabbed Mr. Golston's arm to physically detain him, and Mr. Golston began to film the encounter. You, you're about to get a lawsuit. Sorry, I got a call that you're looking through people's cars. And you're you about to get a lawsuit. You fit the description. You have no Red t legal white right. Shorts. You have no legal right call that you're looking to, people's to put car. your hands on me. Sir. This Sir. is an assault. Sir. What's your name and badge number? Sir, can you please turn around? What's your name and badge number? Officer Sidoti, 190. You're about to get What's a lawsuit. Your name, sir? You have no Sir. legal right to ask me or my, my name. Sir, we got to call put your hands on. Vehicles. All right, and you won't identify yourself. You wouldn't stop, and you're on pr you private no property. You have no legal right to identify me. We got a call that he was looking at people's vehicles, and he wouldn't stop. This him. character saw me up on the hill exercising, going through the lot. He he started his car. He was up there sleeping, or reading, or something. Sleeping. Follow me down and stop me over here. Oh. I exercise here every day. Okay, I'm here. He put his every hands day on I'm, me. I've, I've never with seen no that. legal reason. We got a call. I got it on film. Talk. Okay, what's your name, officer? You got an ID on you? Officer Buchanan. What? Look, he has no reason to ID me. Uh. No legal reason. You all are about to get a huge lawsuit. I got him on camera assaulting me okay. for no legal reason. Mr. Golston argues that Officer Sidoti had no legal reason to detain and identify him, and that Officer Sidoti assaulted him by putting his hands on him. According to Ohio's Stop and Identify Law, which is codified in Section 2921.29 of the Ohio Revised Code, quote, No person who is in a public place shall refuse to disclose the person's name, address, or date of birth when requested by a law enforcement officer who reasonably suspects the person is committing, has committed, or is about to commit a criminal offense. In the 2023 case of State versus Blair, the Second District Court of Appeals of Ohio concluded that for the purposes of this statute, quote, a public place is somewhere ordinary citizens are regularly permitted to be. And in the 2017 case of State versus DC, the same court determined that an individual was in a public place for the purposes of this statute when he was asked to identify himself in the parking lot of a closed business. We will discuss whether Officer Sidoti had reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Golston later in this episode, but for now, it is important to note that a court would probably probably find that the parking lot qualified as a public place under Ohio's stop and identify statute, even though he was on privately owned property, and that Mr. Golston was therefore required to identify himself if Officer Sidoti had reasonable suspicion that he was involved in criminal activity. Additionally, regarding Mr. Golston's allegations that Officer Sidoti assaulted him by using physical force to detain him, assuming for the sake of argument that Officer Sidoti had the reasonable suspicion necessary to legally detain Mr. Golston, it is likely that a court would find 
find that Officer Sidoti's limited use of force was reasonable. As the Supreme Court noted in the 1989 case of Graham v. Connor, quote, Our Fourth Amendment jurisprudence has long recognized that the right to make an investigatory stop necessarily carries with it the right to use some degree of physical coercion or threat thereof to affect it. And in the infamous Terry case itself, the officer grabbed the suspect and physically spun him around before frisking him. Likewise, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over Ohio, stated in the 2001 case of U.S. v. Heath that, quote, This circuit permits the use of force, such as handcuffs and guns, to affect a stop when such a show of force is reasonable under the circumstances of the stop. In this situation, Officer Sidoti used a less intrusive method of force than handcuffs and firearms, as he only grabbed Mr. Golston's arm, and he stated that he only used force after Mr. Golston refused to stop. Accordingly, a court would likely determine that the force used was reasonable, as long as Officer Sidoti had reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Golston. You saw him assaulting you when you walked up. Am, am I right? Absolutely. You did. Sir, I just need your ID. So you're about, you, 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 you escalated this thing. You escalated it. You, we're not going back. This is a lawsuit now. Okay. Right. This is a lawsuit. Sure, we got a call that you're and I'm suing vehicle. you personally we got a call for putting your hands on me. I'm dressed to exercise. I do this every day. Okay. You're going to pay me. We're looking through people's vehicles. So that's no reason. That's no reason call. for you to put your hands on me. You wouldn't identify, and you wouldn't stop. And you talk gave to me, you me no legal reason. Name a legal reason. Officer Sidoti explains that he stopped Mr. Golston based on a call that someone matching his description was looking through people's vehicles. And Mr. Golston argues that he should not have been stopped because Officer Sidoti did not personally observe him doing anything criminal. However, as the Supreme Court noted in the 2014 case of Navarrete versus California, it has, now quoting, firmly rejected the argument that reasonable cause for an investigative stop can only be based on the officer's personal observation, rather than on information supplied by another person. They Therefore, it is possible for an officer to obtain the reasonable suspicion necessary to detain an individual based entirely on information reported by a third party. Now, although merely looking into vehicles is not a crime, this behavior could indicate potential future criminal activity, such as theft. And as the First District Court of Appeals of Ohio explained in the 2005 case of State v. Burnett, quote, It is not necessary to justify a stop under Terry that any criminal activity have actually taken place. Indeed, the defendants in Terry had not broken any law, but were doing nothing more than loitering on a corner in front of a bank. To effectuate a Terry stop, it is only necessary that the police have a reasonable, articulable suspicion that criminal activity is afoot. In the Burnett case, the court agreed with the lower court's determination that officers had reasonable suspicion to detain an individual after a citizen reported that he was repeatedly walking up and down a street that had a history of thefts from autos and looking into car windows. In reaching this conclusion, the court argued that, quote, in a neighborhood with a high incidence of car break-ins, a stranger walking down the street, stopping to look through car windows, is, by any objective measure, suspicious. However, in the 2007 case of Shri Sabbath versus City of Brentwood, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals held that an officer did not have reasonable suspicion to conduct a Terry stop when he responded to an anonymous report of teenagers wearing baggy pants looking into cars in a parking lot. In this decision, the court strongly emphasized the fact that the tip was anonymous, and that it, now quoting, provided only a vague description of possible suspects, described no ongoing criminal activity, and offered no prediction of future activity that could be used to determine the tipster's veracity and reliability. As for the situation in this encounter, we do not have enough information to determine whether, under the totality of the circumstances, Officer Sidoti had reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Golston based on the report that he was looking into car windows, as it is unclear whether there had been a history of theft, or if the tip was anonymous, or offered information proving its reliability. And although the case law suggests that a report of an individual looking into car windows can provide reasonable suspicion in some instances, other precedent indicates that there are also situations where such a tip is insufficient to justify a Terry stop. You should have thought this out before ex escalating. Yeah, get Garfield here. I'm staying here now. This is a police report. Nah, it, bro, we're not going backwards from here. I'm sorry. Nothing right, personal Captain, against you. Okay. He should have never put his hands on me. All right. I have a legal right okay. to defend myself when you do it. Either, e, e, that badge does not give you the sir. right 
to put your hands on me. I got a call that you're looking you, for. You questioned me about it. What did I say? I, and I have a what right did to I say? You too. When I'm you don't have with you, you, you. You're you, on private property. You don't have name the legal right that I have to identify, and I committed What's no crime. What's your reason of being here? And I've committed no crime. I've told What's you several times. Exercise. I'm here right? every day. You have no Cleveland Clinic business. Let's see if this stands up in court. You can't g grab people up on a say so. You didn't see me. You you observed me for at least 45 it. seconds to a minute. And I confirmed what you saw. Irrespective of what someone said. No, Irrespective of you getting a call. Yeah. You, you have now articulate what crime I've I've committed that I have to ID. I know my rights. How you doing, sir? How you doing? You Garfield? Please, yeah, I'm Garfield. My uh, name is Keith Goldston. Uh, nice to meet you, sir. This I want to file a uh, police report. I got this guy on film assaulting me without probable cause, grabbing me, trying to twist my arm behind, behind my back, putting his hands on me. You know what the, uh, yes, you have a right to do what you need to do, but this is the pub, this is a clinic, which means it's private. So if they ask you, to do something, you gotta listen to. No, no, no. Let, let's let, let's test that legally. Well, well see, sir, this is a problem. No, nah, uh, -uh, I don't want to, bro. It well, don't. You, you can't even. You're not even supposed bruh, to be filming here, bro. You, you, you don't what know saying. what you're talking about because don't he's claiming don't you don't. You, you don't, don't know, know what you're, what you're talking, talking about. about. He just claimed that this was private property. It is private property. My, yeah. Which means you have to do what they ask you to do. No, no, no. I do not. You can't use this at the gym. Hey, look. I understand what you're saying. No, no, I do. I do. I do. No, you're, I could do anything I no, want to do, man. This is a private yes, I property. Can. You're not supposed to be filming here. Stop me, then. <laughs> well, see, that's where you go wrong. You can't. If I went to your house and you asked me Stop. not to do this something, this is not my house. Whatever. We're outside on on on, it on the in the public. The security guard contends that filming in the parking lot is prohibited due to its private property status, whereas Mr. Golston asserts that he has the right to film because he is in a public space. As we've discussed many times on ATA, several federal appellate courts have acknowledged that the First Amendment protects certain aspects of the right to film in public, including the right to record law enforcement officers while they are performing their official duties. For instance, in the 2000 case of Smith v. City of Cumming, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals held that, quote, the First Amendment protects the right to gather information about what public officials do on public property, and specifically, a right to record matters of public interest. However, as we have discussed before here on ATA, the First Amendment only prohibits government actors from limiting speech, and doesn't prevent private parties from restricting speech or forbidding certain types of speech, such as filming, on private property. As the Supreme Court explained in the 2019 case of Manhattan Community Access Corp versus Halleck, quote, the Constitution does not disable private property owners and private lessees from exercising editorial discretion over speech and speakers on their property. Likewise, in the 1972 case of Lloyd Corp versus Tanner, the Supreme Court concluded that a shopping center could legally expel protesters, even though the center was open to the public and used for certain meetings and various promotional activities, stating that, quote, there is no open-ended invitation to the public to use the center for any and all purposes, however incompatible with the interests of both the the stores and the shoppers whom they serve. Here, the Cleveland Clinic is not a public, government-owned hospital, and the private owner retains the right to regulate speech on its property. As such, it is almost certain that a court would determine that the Cleveland Clinic had the authority to prohibit filming on its premises, even though it is generally held open for public access. If, it, if it's your property, then you've got a right Whatever to his name is, I'm filing a lawsuit for assault and battery. So these guys, they have a right to talk to you. They don't have a, he doesn't have a right so, to put yeah. his hands on me, bro. Uh, talking, I don't know, talking, I don't know, we were all right uh, yeah. when we were talking. I don't know what lead to that, but. I want to, I'll what, tell you what. What lead to that, why he. I'll tell you what. You, you know? If this guy, Bruh. this officer asks you to leave and you don't leave, you, that's a crime because they're going to be criminal trespass. He didn't ask me to leave. He didn't ask me to leave. Place, You're making okay? stuff up now. I'm not. That's why Bruh, I asked you. Do you have a supervisor here? Yeah, we do have. A okay, let me file a report with your supervisor. Now, I want to file a criminal complaint. You guys are the reporting officers. No, I want to file. This is, this is Cleveland this Clinic. Is, if you want. Did, did he office? call you? Yeah, they called us. Y'all don't sick. have no jurisdiction. They, oh, that's that. They, they are police department. You want to file? Where, where's Where's the supervisor for uh, 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 my, Cleveland Clinic Police right Department? Right now, it's me, but my supervisor's at home. Who is here today that I, besides you that I can make a, 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 a report about this incident? My partner, 
but he, let's get let's get him here. He's not a supervisor. He's right, I'm right here, right behind me. What's your name, sir? We can talk now. All right, what's going on, bro? You heard what was going yeah, on. Yeah, I heard what's going on. Right. All right. So, you, do you want uh, Marcus's number? No, I want to. I'm gonna. I want to get something legally on paper mm -hmm. right now. Do you want to write it down on a statement, or you may just write this down now? I'm gonna get your statements like that. Want me to go do that? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. You come with me. Now I have business on the property, right? I don't know. What no, I'm just. I'm talking to him. So well, he just grabbed you and stuff like that? Absolutely. That's crazy. I stop and I talk to him uh -huh. and I let him know exactly what I was doing. Yeah. I just wish... Uh, We're going to take it through the proper channels. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> All right. Yeah, I'll give you my hands like that. Uh, you want to go somewhere else or are you just yeah i want to okay. i want to go sit down yeah let's go okay. should have never got that uh that yeah. on too. Mr. Golston followed Officer Buchanan into the hospital facility to file a report on the encounter, but it is unclear whether he spoke to anyone else regarding the incident or escalated his complaint. Additionally, although Mr. Golston stated several times during the encounter that Officer Sidoti's actions warranted a lawsuit and he would be filing one, we could not confirm whether he has pursued legal action or whether any disciplinary action has been taken against Officer Sidoti. Overall, Officer Sidoti gets a B-. minus. Because although it is possible that a court would find he had the reasonable suspicion necessary to detain Mr. Golston, he overlooked opportunities to utilize less invasive methods of investigation into Mr. Golston's conduct. And he failed to de-escalate the situation once Mr. Golston made it clear that he was simply exercising. Regardless of whether or not Officer Sidoti had reasonable suspicion to detain and identify Mr. Golston, a less intrusive and arguably more effective investigatory approach would have been to simply observe Mr. Golston's behavior in the parking lot to determine if he was engaging in any criminal activity. Now, while it likely would have been evident that Mr. Golston was simply exercising if Officer Sidoti had taken the time to watch him, it is unclear exactly how knowing Mr. Golston's name would have done anything to confirm or dispel any suspicion that Officer Sidoti might have had regarding Mr. Golston's activities in the parking lot. The over-reliance on Terry stop identifications is a common mistake we see officers make on this channel. And this episode serves as an important reminder that detaining and identifying suspects is only one of the many tools that officers can use when investigating potentially suspicious activity. Mr. Golston gets a B because although he demonstrated some misunderstandings regarding Terry stops, Ohio's identification laws, and the First Amendment, he respectfully but forcefully voiced his objections and strongly advocated for his constitutional rights. That being said, his refusal to identify himself potentially violated Ohio's stop and identify law, as it is possible that a court could determine that Officer Sidoti did have reasonable suspicion to detain him. Now, while I sympathize with Mr. Golston's frustration at being stopped for simply exercising in a parking lot, it is essential that citizens understand that there are situations where officers are authorized to detain or even arrest individuals who have not committed any crimes. Just as I do not have sufficient information to predict whether a court would conclude that Officer Sidoti had reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Golston, a citizen typically does not know everything that an officer stopping them knows. And this encounter demonstrates why it is often in a citizen's best interest to comply with officer identification demands in situations like this, particularly in states that criminalize the refusal to identify. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.